go into settings and this is for all your users. They're going to click under channels and uh, click on the email. And this is the screen you're going to be taken to. And very simply, you'll click on getting started. And then you're presented with basically kind of the four, the three, the four big choices, which is Zoho Mail, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Office 365, and then other mail kind of takes care of if you've got your own random little service, you can go ahead and click on that and put all of your server parameters in and it'll set it up. Um, most companies, what would you say, 90% Tyler are going to be Gmail and Office 365? Yeah, that's about what we've seen. I would say so. So we're going to step you through those real quickly. Gmail is really straightforward. It's kind of like everything you do in Google. So if you're a Google user, You'll always, by the way, no matter what you're doing, choose IMAP. That gives you real-time synchronization. It updates all sorts of, you know, clicked and opened and all those kind of things. So you want to always choose IMAP across the board. And then when you do that, it's going to pop up your standard Google authentication box. And you will just choose your email account and go ahead and allow it. And then you are synchronized. And then it uh, will also want to take you through the exact same steps for Office 365, a little different. And always choose IMAP. And here, it's just going to ask you for your credentials. So I will tell you one thing we run into all the time with Office 365 is that you will need sometimes an application-specific password. So if that's the case, you want to search for, I need an application-specific password so that you can do it because uh, sometimes that's set up a lot of with, with you've got two-factor authentication, you're going to have to have a specific password in order to get in. Um, but once you set that up, this is what it looks like on the back end, whether it's Gmail or Office 365. After you've put your credentials in, it's basically going to give you this exact screen couple of things you may notice that you'll have a different some some companies have a different outbound server for various reasons if that's the case then what you can do is you can go ahead and put all you can look at server details and you can change the configurations on this if you want different server settings than the standard ones that come with that and this is basically what you're going to look like if you're kind of using other email type of thing as well another thing is super important when all your employees set up their email is you know public is probably the way you want to go that means that you actually everybody in the organization can see all of the emails that have been going back and forth with a particular contact um, but you maybe want to hide inner office emails. So that would be something in your, where you're, you know, from your domain to your domain in the organization, because maybe those are private. So if you exclude your own company's domain, it'll make sure that those emails don't end up inside the CRM. And then you're going to go ahead and hit save and your mail is completely set up. And if we look here, as soon as you do that, then all of the emails will appear in a record. It's a bit like magic. So for example, if you uh, have been having conversations, email conversations with somebody for five or 10 years, but you've never put them in your CRM, as soon as you actually add them as a contact or a lead in your CRM, and you put that email address in, it's going to pull in all their emails going back for all those years. As long as you've got that mapped up, it'll pull everything, all the conversations you have ever had with them. So really interesting and very, very helpful, especially when you're trying to understand client engagements and particularly maybe somebody's out of the office and you need to understand what they're working on and a lot of filtering that comes with that. Set your email up. You will not regret it.